Oh, behind and him. And just stays it. What a yeah. play. All the way! Touchdown, Cleveland! I'm calling both games! There is no Thursday night football game this week. The Bills' chief shit wrecker has been pushed back to Monday night due to reasons of Tuesday night football. I personally don't feel anything towards it. Thursday night football is a blight on society and we're honestly better off for it. Despite this victory for humanity, Corona Chan doesn't give a fuck about it. She's been trying to seep her disease-laden claws into many teams to try and sabotage their seasons. The Patriots had another scare, the Falcons had one, the Jaguars put 13 players on the COVID list, mostly practice squad guys, and a few other situations as well. Fortunately, most of them have been isolated cases and there has been no real spread. Football will commence without interruption. Let us begin. Sunday's festivities begin with humble measures. A simple yet effective antidote to all sense of quality throughout the world. Tank Ball! This matchup is somehow both a competition for Trevor and a chance to gain ground in their division race. Quite impressive considering the slop we have on display. A battered offense against Kyle Allen at quarterback. This is the kind of goodness you want in a tank of. All of the shittiness with the slow, trotting play of teams hesitant to get their feet wet. Like most good tank bulls, this matchup is going to the wire. Tied at 13 with the offense is doing nothing. But I implore you to look at the football team. They're pushing hard to win for Riverboat Rod. They're oh going no. to pull a Daniel Jones and cause a major momentum shift. Let's try this again. They're pushing hard to win for Riverboat Rod. They're going all the way for the touchdown. Because we need more of this boring goodness. Wait a second, they're going for two here? Here's your game. Allen, looking, stopping, pumping, throwing incomplete. Relax everyone, it's all good. Washington was merely playing the long range game. Blowing this opportunity forces the Giants to win, thus handicapping them in the quest for Trevor. Somebody finally gets the point of Tank Ball. Well done, lads. The Broncos have learned their lessons from their star running back, Melvin Gordon. Not content with just speeding on the field, he chose to speed off of it. How fast? He thought he was Chris Johnson. While drunk. It's cool though, he called John Elway. He was only punished with strep throat. Still kinda sucks though. As for Denver, the key for them was slow and steady. They can't go too fast lest they get pulled over for speeding. No, their remedy for Melvin's faux pas is the field goal. It's to mere coincidence that the Patriots have chosen to take this game back to an old age. Probably the 1940s. The forward pass was just being invented, and apparently it led to nothing but turnovers and maybe a touchdown if we're lucky. Is it a battle of defenses? Probably not when the Patriots haven't had much time to practice due to Corona Chan. Drew Locke has also returned and appears to be in the giving spirit as well. God damn it, man! Football fields don't give a fuck about your charity! It will only lead to New England having a chance to win it all. But yes, old school offenses. Broncos escape the COVID ward with a win for the lost bye week. They have life. And that's the most surprising thing of all. Our next journey takes us to the lost wasteland of Duval, where good football stayed here for about six months. Today it's a new battle involving should-be-fired coaches. Another tank ball! I was worried about Jacksonville earlier in the year. Winning is not ideal for what they're trying to do. They want an androgynous leader of the offense. They know that the failure must commence. And good for them. Detroit is still pretending that nothing is wrong. The result turns into a massacre. Jaguars being skinned and sent to a taxidermist is a nice piece for their cigar room. And they'll make sure they don't come back like the Lions have allowed most teams. They'll be given an easy win. Detroit loses multiple times today. Not only have they won a game, but now the brass has justification to keep Matt Patricia around for a bit longer. He's won two of three, you can't fire him now. I'm so sorry, Lions fans. Perhaps you should try to sign kickers who have never kicked a field goal before. Then you'll get what you want. Do you remember when we all thought Cleveland was legit for a few weeks? When we believed they could make a true statement by beating up their arch rival in the Steelers? 
Those were some good times. Shit may be crazy out there, but even 2020 knows when things are going too far. Pittsburgh must reign supreme against the Browns. And it's not even close. It's pure annihilation. A shit stomping we haven't seen occur at Heinz Field in roughly a few years. Baker Mayfield was visibly injured, looked like shit, got his sphincter moved into his intestines, and was then removed to save him from further pain. All optimism over the past few weeks is suddenly vanishing. They still don't have enough. The lordship over the poor vassal continues. I jack off, you see, Jack? And talk and sell the guys that ship before! How the hell did you make that? When you create a character in an RPG, you try to make one to suit your strengths as a player. Speed for rogue players, strength for hack and slash, intelligence for the magic users. But this year's bears? They put everything in the luck attribute. There is no other way to explain how they are escaping with so many wins as they are. This includes a team like Carolina. They've taken out some decent opponents so far, but Chicago decided that's good enough. We can't have teams overachieving besides us. Nick Foles may not do too much to succeed, but it's enough to get the win. Bears defense will suffocate everything else. They are the mustard gas traveling through no man's land. Nothing survives. Impenetrable. Foreboding. I don't know how the hell this is real, but this team is 5-1. and one. All of Wisconsin is now flooding with deep dish pizza. If you were to tell me a month ago that this matchup would be a tank bowl, I would have called you a fool. Yet here we are. You can call it a reach, but all signs point to incredible tanking. God bless Kirk Cousins. He believes in the art of tanking. Even against a terrible secondary and the Falcons, he does his damnedest to put the game out of reach early with three picks. He doesn't give a fuck, he's already got his money. All of Minneapolis will now make sure their livers don't get to see the light of day. The rest is done by Matt Ryan. Oh yes, the Vikings secondary is just as horrible as we remember. Plus Julio Jones and interim coach Raheem Morris joined in on the fun. Party in their red zone. Everyone's invited. Vikings fans, welcome to agony. Kirk isn't the main problem here, but he is a problem. Just a friendly reminder that they extended him this past offseason for reasons of convenience and feeling there's nothing better out there. You chose this path. Now walk through it. Bengals are leading out of the gate? Is everything okay in this simulation? It's just too abnormal for any of my results to lead to this. They're up by 21 now. Hold on, let me check something. Ah, here's the problem. The bungalometer is miscalibrated. Someone set it to win mode. Here, let me just fix this. Run that. Carry the four. And that should do it. There we go. Everything's back to normal. The Colts storm back in the matter of a quarter to make this a game again. With the bungalometer reset, things are much tighter in the second half. Still, Indy needs this win to keep up with the Joneses of their division. Since he should be an easy test, but they just won't go away. More bad interceptions by Rivers continue that trend. Look at them go down the field. Fat Randy, they need you for the lead. The snap down, the kick by Bullock is on the way, and it's off the upright! Supposed to tap asses at the club, not the goalpost, Randy. Too bad some nerd can do that for the Colts. Now the Bungles need some of that delicious Burrow churro to get satisfaction. Burrow standing in over the middle, intercepted! Somebody forgot to mention the Bungles are on a keto diet. Good to see the Bungalometer is back in four. I'll take my payment to my bank account now, Andy. Philadelphia, a land of trash. A place of blight, crime, and mismanagement from Jersey to King of Prussia, where rational hatred is the calling card of any given day. I'm talking about the Eagles. They are all of these and so much more. You thought you were free of them being full of relentless agony with the Super Bowl win. By the good lord above, I can safely say you missed like trying to get a cheesesteak at Geno's. There is a whole lot of ass sucking in the first half. Baltimore just has their way in an alley, mainly with stabbings and a 17 to nothing lead. But once again, the talent of Philly comes out just in time to inspire false hope. Maybe our city doesn't smell like an ashtray. Maybe we can send all of our shitty citizens across the border to Jersey. Maybe the Eagles can play up to their potential again. Baltimore is letting their foot off the gas. You can't do that, boys. Did you see what happened in Pittsburgh last week? They nearly won that game. And they're doing the same here. Slowly, surely creeping back into the affair. They can't make it easy for anyone, especially their fans. The touchdown is here. 
Doug Peterson has to have something good planned for the two-point conversion. Going for two. Wentz cannot get there. The biggest play of the game and you run a fucking run pass option? Neither of them knew what the fuck to do. Perhaps you should have kicked the extra point instead of going for two after the first touchdown of the game, Doug. Your dumbass foe analytics are killing this team. Now Pittsburgh wants you dead as well. You're uniting all of Pennsylvania under one banner. This is a crucial game for the Texans. Despite being left dead to rights, they still have playoff aspirations. The only way to realize them is to straight up pull wins out of their ass. Tennessee is a good start. Sure, it'll have to be through a warlord, his horsemen, the Miami Matador, and a swath of defenses, but the win is vital to Houston. Your general is Deshaun Watson, the cleric of Clemson, a man who knows the powers of healing and leadership. He was a man possessed by the light, slinging his arrows and spears into the heart of the Titan. The war lasts for days and days. Neck and neck in a pure stalemate. Houston must go for the kill. They're up by seven, but they need to go for two. Put the battle out of reach. This is the price of going double or nothing. You look terrible if it backfires. Now the Texans' defenses have been exhausted. The Titan charges back again. He prepares for his crushing blow. Tannehill, gonna go for it, to the end zone! It's caught, did he get down? He did! I would wish you luck in overtime, but you're done, Houston. Because I tremble in fear if I were you, the Titan of Derrick Henry is on the warpath. Some say he drinks from the skulls of the fallen after every battle. He'll notch another win on his blade to signify this fight. Henry, looking for room to the end zone! There are only three things King Henry cares for. To crush his enemies, to see them driven before him, and to hear the lamentation of the women. The New York Jets. That is all. This franchise is so embarrassing that no adjective can properly describe the depths of how low they can go. There was that whole Le'Veon Bell fracas earlier in the week. Afterwards, Greg Williams is pissed that he can't put a bounty on the coach and chucks him under a raging fire. I wouldn't be talking with how shit your defense is, Greg. Not with a bunch of angry dolphins coming to destroy you all. Oh no. They found out that their old coach that oppressed them is here. They're... Oh my god. They're putting holes in him that I didn't know even existed. The absolute horror I'm witnessing from this attack will require years of therapy to undo. Even the butt fumble isn't enough to describe them. Not for this. We need something new. Something that can inspire many memes for years to come. There it is. The second buttception. The greatest contribution the Jets have made to the NFL in several years. I wonder if this is the brilliance that Adam Gase exudes from every pore. Extend this man pronto. The meme powers inside of him are exorbitant. The dream Super Bowl matchup for a decade. Brady versus Rodgers. Two future Hall of Famers locking horns to see who is truly superior at their craft. Tampa Bay, I send my condolences. For you get to face the wrath of pissed off Aaron Rodgers as he chucks a pick six and gives the Bucks momentum. Did they adopt the Astros' sign-stealing techniques? Rodgers looks absolutely horrible. He's being read like he's a picture book. Good night, moon. Good night, stars. Good night to the Packers as they allow 38 unanswered points. Did you go back to being frauds the moment I consider you legit? Is this how we're doing things? I'd sadly buy it knowing this group. For a team that is still dealing with an arsenal loaded with injuries and a destroyed home base, they recover well. Jimmy G healed himself from the relentless pecking of Dolphins to rise again. He returned to form in the first half against the Rams. All of San Francisco now cheers in unison. Their season is not in serious jeopardy. The defense would return in smothering style. There would be no shelter given, no aid delivered, only the slashing of blades. Sean McVay will try to go for it on fourth down at the one, but the fate will be an interception. There is no respite for them. The Niners clamp down and hold on. A much-needed victory. Good showering after last week. I respect that. Rams, don't worry about this. You gave your energy to the Dodgers. You'll be okay. The Chiefs look around at their loaded offense and say one thing. You know what this team needs? Le'Veon Bell. Make our deadly weapons even deadlier. Fuck the rookie, let's just stack fucking everything. Bell isn't in a full role yet, but it won't stop Kansas City from imposing their will in a rather ugly game. It's more on the shitty weather, not the teams in question. First Coronachan is against football, now Mother Nature is hampering teams. Josh Allen looks off. 
and I don't know if it's him, the pressure he's getting, or the weather doing it. I'd ask more questions, but the Bills defense can't stop Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Now imagine Le'Veon catching passes out of the backfield. Jesus Christ. This offense could be even more of a nightmare. I don't blame the Bills for losing here. It's nigh impossible to stop this offense. You can only try to max out its kill count like the Raiders did. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> Are the levels of delusion still high like they were before the season? It sucks about Dak, but he wouldn't have helped much against Arizona. Dak can't command Zeke to stop lathering grease on his fucking hands. Dak can't play all four positions in the secondary. Dak can't replace every single battered member of what was the offensive line. Dallas is a total mess. And the only fortunate thing is that their entire division is New York Jets' tier of shit. In this time, Mike McCarthy will consult his 1997 copy of Football Digest to further develop his analytical acumen. Things are getting so bad that Cowboys fans are starting to ponder if Jason Garrett was that bad of a coach. The fucking Clapmaster! You know how awful it has to be to have second thoughts about that. Jesus, boy, step away from the liquor cabinet. You're too drunk. The Cowboys seriously need Jesus, but Jerry Boy will probably think he could play free safety. I laugh in the language known as Kyler Murray. For the dubious honor of LOL Cow of the Week, I'm going to put it up to a fan vote. You can thank this beautiful bastard for this wonderful idea that no longer makes this arbitrary. Mob rule cures everything, right? This week's nominees are Doug Peterson for reasons of overanalyzing situations. The Dallas Cowboys for hilarious failure and continued dysfunction. And the New York Jets, just for being the New York Jets. The people have chosen. This week's winner is... The Dallas Cowboys! Congratulations on throwing money at a Mike McCarthy that has learned absolutely nothing. I'd have personally chosen Peterson for this week, but that whole division is a low cow. Fuck that. If you've been noticing as of late, there has been no sure thing in the NFL. They've been fighting and trying to rush through outbreaks in any given day of the week. Think of it like a hacker trying to steal your information. Without proper protection and protocols, they have the potential to be compromised. A virus is a lot like a hacker can easily seep through and will not stop unless properly eradicated. You need security. You need protection against this menace. This is where the sponsor of today's video, ExpressVPN, will help you. With their state-of-the-art encryption technology, their VPN will protect your data and information every time you go anywhere on the internet. My love of it involves the ease of use. NHL free agency was a big thing in the past few weeks, but most of the news comes out of Canada. What that means is that I can't see much video out of the nation. That's where ExpressVPN comes in. A quick change of servers, one click, and that's it. And it's not just for hockey news, but I can use it for content on Netflix, cheaper subscriptions to sports channels and leagues, get past local blackouts, the opportunities are endless. I can access a whole new world of inaccessible information, and you can too. You can even get three months of world-class protection free when you go to expressvpn.com slash utree. That's why I go with ExpressVPN for my internet protection needs. It's a necessity in this day and age. The gods always demand sacrifice. Let us lament those we have lost this week. Unit lost. Unit lost. May the fallen be blessed in the football afterlife. Amen. Five yard line. No. Henry. Henry. Breaking free. 20. 25. Off to the races. They may not catch him. They won't catch him. Touchdown, Tennessee.